Good evening, everyone. As a uh, leader of an aviation practice, that's a hard act to follow. Um, and the contribution, the adverse contribution of the aviation industry on carbon emissions is absolutely undeniable. But as terminal designers, we don't control, we don't have any influence or impact on the technology that's the greatest contributor, which is the aircraft. We certainly have some control over the terminals and the airport facilities. We're going to feature I'm going to feature three projects that we have worked on or are working on and explain a little bit about the approach that we're taking. Uh, we, if we were having this conversation five, ten years ago, we would be talking about and pounding our chest about LEED certification, and that's, that's long gone. Uh, the challenge we have at HOK now for all of our practices is net zero, and each practice has been challenged to complete a net zero project within the next two years. So that, that's our goal. So the three projects I'm, I'm going to review, and I'm going to do this rather quickly, uh, is LaGuardia Airport, Terminal B. Uh, if you've driven across the ground or through the Grand Central, you'll see it. Uh, Indianapolis International Airport and Long Beach Airport. There are three very different airports with three very different approaches to energy conservation and passenger comfort. So LaGuardia Terminal B, this is the LaGuardia we all knew and loved. Um, and uh, for those of you that may not be familiar for how it functioned, uh, oh, okay. This is this was the front. This was the face of the airport, a four-story, five-story parking garage. Uh, the actual terminal is situated back here. This is Terminal B. And there are conventional concourses or piers coming out towards the air side. So you'll notice that all of the operational terminal facilities are as far from the Grand Central as you could possibly get. And it's all parking in the front. So that's where we were. This is where we're going. This is the project that's under construction right now. And... Uh, I'm going to give a brief summary of why we want it and why it's so innovative and wonderful. The solution to this puzzle was a product not only of the architecture and the engineering, but the builders were involved, the Port Authority was involved, and most importantly, the operator was involved. The way this project is being delivered, our team includes the operator who will be responsible for running this terminal for the next 35 years. So they brought to the project an inherent interest, not only on how much it costs to build, not only on the quality of the experience that it's providing, but how, how expensive it is going to be to maintain over 35 years, how much energy does it use. So it was a really interesting um, experience having that as part of the genesis of the idea. This is the diagram that I titled Unlocking the Winding Solution. And the problem with this project was not only how to create a new airport, but how do you build a new terminal on the footprint of the existing terminal and keep every gate and the terminal operation the entire time. And it's that challenge that led to the innovative solution. So very simply, the, the head house or the main processor where you check in and you claim your baggage that was built, is being built, on the footprint of the old garage. Then we are, this concourse is well under construction. This will be in operation before the end of the year. So this is concourse A and concourse B. Concourse B is, uh, well, this is where the gates are situated. And the concourses in the terminal are connected by elevated pedestrian bridges that literally span over the top of Terminal B. So this roadway remains in operation. This terminal remains operation. While this is being built, this garage is already completed and in operation, and this is nearing completion. So we can keep this in operation almost up until the last moment. So, and the other important thing to note here is these piers are a very antiquated way of dealing with aircraft at an airport. It's very difficult to maneuver. So if you have to move an aircraft from this concourse 
to that concourse, which they may need to do for operational reasons, that aircraft has to go out onto the taxiway, and that's what creates some of the ground congestion at, at the airport. There's nothing we can do about the air space that's limited. So in our scheme, and our concept, this is the new terminal. So the, the, this is the bridge which is elevated, allows aircraft to maneuver underneath. So we've created an internal taxi lane where aircraft can now maneuver pretty much everywhere on the site without having to go out into the taxiway. So we've, we've taken a huge step in reducing the long lines of aircraft fully revved up contributing to carbon emissions out on the taxiway. This is the, the best solution for getting an aircraft from the gate onto the runway and in the air as quickly as possible. This is a view of those bridges and you can see that they're designed to allow the aircraft to go underneath and have the added benefit of providing a really wonderful experience. And in the case of the far bridge, a panoramic view of the city skyline. And the award of that project to this team led the Port Authority to enlist HOK to develop an architectural master plan for the entirety of the airport. So the project that we're responsible for is this piece here. This, the rest of the airport is shortly gonna begin construction. Delta Airlines is developing the east end of the terminal, but we were asked to establish design criteria so that when it's all done, it looks as if a single hand designed it. Functionally, it's very different internally, but it will look like one unified airport complex. And in another measure that I think we need a, a whole lot more of, plan right now, what's being studied seriously, is an air train connecting the two terminals to mass transit. Not, not very much unlike the JFK air train. So what you're seeing here in the foreground is the station that would serve the Delta Terminal, and in the distance is the station that would serve Terminal B, and we've even made some allowances for a potential future hotel. So taking an airport and making more of it than just an airport is also an important environmental factor. So this is where construction was now as of four weeks ago. This is the new departures hall. That's the concourse that will open up shortly. Indianapolis Airport uh, is just outside of Indianapolis, and it, it was designed to do two things, to elevate the stature and the perception of the city of Indianapolis, but also to be as efficient as we possibly could. So um, the skylights were determined through very intensive daylight analysis. The, this roof, this saddle-shaped roof is is lined with gutters that are larger than you can imagine. One uh, a person can stand in there and not be able to look outside. That collects the rainwater. The rainwater is delivered to cisterns that provide all of the irrigation for the landscape around the, around the terminal. And simple materials, um, not a lot in the ceiling, and it's, it's uh, all of the air conditioning, the lighting, the PA is provided by the, by the roof of the Czech Islands. But we did something here that, that I believe is the first time it's been done in the United States. We often use radiant, uh, radiant heating in houses and commercial facilities. This space it has a radiant cooled floor. So even though the ceilings are high, only the 12 feet above floor is conditioned. We didn't care whether it's, whether it's too hot or too cold up at the ceiling, as long as the place where people reside um, is properly conditioned. And the other interesting thing is their interest in art and the forecourt between the garage and the, gar and the terminal became a metaphor for what you see from a plane looking down on the landscape of Indianapolis. And the last a couple of shots of Long Beach Airport. Uh, this was a project that was completed about seven or eight years ago, um, and it takes what is traditionally an interior experience, and this could only be in Long Beach, and places the gate holding areas with fire pits and other amenities outdoors. And so the amount of condition space, oh, I think that's the only slide I have, the amount of condition space in this terminal is minimized. Now we can't do that everywhere, obviously, but 
designing terminals that are appropriate and, lev and leverage what's possible for a particular location is what we try to do.